18 yard area and it tells you about McGee. the confidence he was left to roam in that walker cup final and the kc fans were very upset here's a long range effort there from a man who knows how to kick that football that these players having each other and Fabian, Fabian Grant scored just in. firing shots at will. Scored Kingston in. College just moving the ball around and Grant trying to dice on that occasion. The defense of Jamaica College. By Delverone Simpson. Games like these fly by quickly. Just to tell you, if you're joining us McGee. for the first time, St. Elizabeth he was in goal. Trailed by two goals to nearly normal time. To roll back in to the level things up final at 2 2. Then went on to beat the Calabar. KC fans were very on upset. There's a lot of great effort there from at that. A man and who knows how to final that for the first time since this best. Then they McGee. He was anticipating. And Fabian, Fabian Grant scored in free kick one year. And he was quoted. anticipating that charge. It's almost, if you want to call it that, from the ball Anton and Mullins. He looked around when he was about to lay. That's foot on goal and he spotted the Mullins and he almost Mullins. just stood his ground and allowed Mullins to run into his back. An intelligent player time. Games like understanding these fly back he quickly. He is, just to his, tell you, his awareness you're the joining us for the first time. Impeccable and again Saint just winning this team and free kick which they gave away possession but normal time they came back to now gives back possession at to Jamaica College. Then went on to beat Calabar on penalties, sudden death penalties at that. And they're into the final for the first time, St. Elizabeth Pentecost. Here's McGee. We have seen some really, really major classic matchups between these two teams down the years. Meeting. And we'd give anything tonight to see another one. one here. All the makings of one. Taking that charge almost, and if you want to call college. it, from Anton and Mullins. Plays around the football over on the far side. He looks at him when he was about to lay. Strong, Captain. hard tackle coming in from Davian Shakes. Put on goal and, and he spotted Mullins defender. and he almost just stood his ground and allowed Mullins to run into his back. An intelligent. It's Casey's throw over on the far side. Where As his customary way, most he of the attack is going to be down that right hand for Jamaica College. It's their the capital of the league, however, again, just and winning this team is deployed in that area. They gave away Campbell possession for Kingston College. In the center. High standard of kicking. Back possession to Jamaica College. That was made possible by McGee. Slipped two defenders, passed it to gone. his compatriot, Norman Campbell. And, and we've seen Campbell some really, it. was given really enough space and time. Could have taken another major dribble, classic match up between these two teams. The down the, he wanted the years. to catch Rodriguez and out of goal. Tonight to see another one. It has all so the way around the top one. Wearing a bit of Kinesia tape on. That's his right. Plays around the football over on the side, far side. Sackling wall. Good control by McGee. Strong, even go. hard tackle coming in no. from Davian Shakes. That even go wasn't completed. Kingston Normally College looking to take advantage of it. Fender. Atkinson. Dipping one way, then the next. Trying to work in tandem with his case. Ramsey. Ramsey. Throw over Ramsey. the far in side. In the Jamaica College area. As his customary Casey way. Casey unable to take advantage. Most of the attacks Fabian goals. Grant arriving there. Down that right hand channel for and then briefly Jamaica College. Testing his range. Their captain Malik Powell and every Tyree single player from Kingston College is deployed in that year or otherwise. Campbell. In They're now the testing center. goalkeeper High Carl Sunderland Williams kicking. in goal for Jamaica College because they understand that if they don't kick, they won't score. And it seems to me that, that was made possible by McGee. The intention of two defenders to get on the score sheet pretty early. Compatriot. Norman or maybe and they watched Campbell the howler against the team. Was the given enough speed. space and time. Could have taken another suspect. Dribble, but opted for the shot. Ball he wanted to by the Kingston College defense. Rodriguez out of goal. Away out of that little danger area. Real so able to keep the, the ball in. Wearing a bit of Kinesia tape on. He got a start last week and was substituted deep in the second half. His right after KC had the game wrapped up. Thai, can they afford that tonight? Or are they going to need him on the park? Good control because by McGee. they're playing a higher, much higher quality opposition tonight. Give and go. Walford. No. That give and go. Or coming to point. Completed. And Kingston College looking to take advantage of Neil Thomas. Fit, who missed a number of active good goal scoring opportunities in Mobe last week. Dipping one way. Number then the 17. Next. Looking to make a amends tonight. In tandem with looking a bit busy Grant. and sprightly as well. Hey. This is Campbell coming in to make a college up. area. Casey. You're unable to take advantage. Teams taking Fabian turns. Grant arriving there. Give the ball away. Tevin Rochester. And then briefly. Who sparked so many of Jamaica College. Testing his moves in the quarterfinal. 
Ever Here is again the snap at the heels of Ramsey. Or Ramsey managing to hold it, but it's Captain testing. Brown unable to keep it in. And a throw into Jamaica College. Carl Williams just is telling his team to Jamaica lift College their because they understand intensity. Jamaica that College matching stride to stride. Kick, they won't score. Kingston College is attempt at And it forward. seems to me that. Campbell the intention forcing Casey the ball is all the way back get on the to Nathan Hunter. McGee just swiveling around that little area or there. Maybe between they watch the, the tee and the middle of the park. This is Thomas. Didn't tell him last week. Still Thomas. I figure that he's suspect. No Reed and Grant trading passes. Eventually it ends up with Walford. Ball kept in skillfully by the Kingston College defense. Triple away out of that little danger area. Reed is unable to keep the ball in the game. He's now getting a bit tasty. Got to start last week and was substituted into deep in the second half. And now starting to trade attacks after Casey Campbell had the game wrapped better up. With that one. He broke Camp. up the play. And they Rochester broke forward as a central midfielder. Expected a good enough pass, but higher, it was over hit by opposition tonight. Campbell not as confident Walford. on the football. Just below Malik Malik Howell, the number seven point and marshal of this Jamaica College team. Neil Thomas away from the danger area, even though Mr. Mr. College Nunbrook. retains possession. Reed. Mackinson, Reed, goalkeeper advances. Collects well. That one was looped enough for Carl Williams to comfortably jump and collect that one. But good one-two movement on that left-hand side between Mackinson and Trayvon Reed. A lot of attacks are going down that left-hand channel. It seems that they've found some sort of opening. But JC is sticking to the task, defending well, making sure that this is a measured game. Fervent opus in Campis. Work is burning in the field, the motto for the Dark Blues. And for Kingston College, possibly the most famous motto in the country. Even if you're not a KC old boy or current student, you know it. Fortis cadere sedere non potest. The brave may fall, but never yield. Thomas to Rochester. Looking for McGee. Didn't quite get to McGee because McGee is heavily policed over on the far side by Anton and Mullins. Does seem as if Mullins has the marking job on McGee. Mackison, is he really yet to get into this game? Normally it doesn't take him this long. But perhaps the import of the moment. Campbell. Rochester. Walford still manages to keep possession for Jamaica College. Does he get a corner? No, it's a goal kick. The last touch came off. Walford, says the referee. Excellent defending from the captain, Brown. Just watching his player, anticipating every single move and being there. That presence, that awareness, like a true skipper doing well. Walford, not giving up, not letting up, but Brown was equal to the task. And without any show of disrespect to any of the teams who have made it to the semi-finals of the Flow Super Cup, if you ask the man in the street, as Kingston College, Reed fires straight to the goalkeeper. If you ask every man on the street, before this game, a ball was kicked in anger. He would tell you that this is the final before the final. Certainly, these two teams deserve to actually play in a final, but... And so too Stets. Definitely, and Stets has shown their mettle. Jamaica College. Campbell. Thomas giving chase, as is Walford. The latter picks it up. Rochester was calling for it just away to his right. He elected to play into the pathway and hoping that Campbell would have run onto it. Campbell did run onto it, but it was one of those surprise passes that it was almost impossible for him to get back to. Saw the intention from Walford, trying to link up his attacker, Campbell, the number 12 and the number 11. They work well on this left side for JC, but just an overhead pass. 
Priestley. Buttons out of the play there. Back tackling Wall. Here's McGee. Captain Howell. Plays in Thomas. Over on the far side. Heavily policed here. Ah! Brilliant feet. To get away from his marker. And a free kick. One by Jamaica College. Wonderfully done there by Shadil Thomas. Excellent piece of skill. Dismissing his marker shakes. But cleared up by the number 12, Anthony Mullins, on that left hand side. But it's actually a corner. Thought it was a free kick because Thomas was kicked over in that little area there. Actually, a throw. In fact, <laughs> we're, we're, let's just go with what we see now. It's now a throw. But how did that result? Top a throw because the ball went that side. Again, we're from a very far vantage point. Yeah, but the ball went that we, we I saw when the ball went behind. Well, let's get back to the live action. <laughs> this is warm for them. Rochester. Cut out once again. By Trey Bennett. Rochester, very strong and powerful player. Reed, just picking the pocket or intercepting a ball that was intended for the captain. And now Kingston College looking to profit from it. Grant flicking the ball almost overhead and Reed just continuing his run. And he has benefited from it. Atkinson turns brilliantly. Howell was there to save the day for JC. He needs to do it again while the referee's whistle intervenes and Jamaica College has a respite. Interesting play between Atkinson, Mackison, Reed and Grant trying to get some passes in between themselves and dissect what is, as we see currently, a strong blue wall in front of them. Walford motoring forward for JC. He has brought Campbell in. Can Campbell keep the ball in? No, he can't. He's gone behind for a goal kick to KC. But good idea from the Jamaica College team. The execution wasn't the greatest, but you can see the rationale behind that play. Understanding the rationale, Wayne, but I'm upset with Walford because he should have gone for that shot himself. Again, you want to get your attacking players under action, but dribbling all the way, space opening up, you're all that way deep into the half of Kingston College. You're a left footer. The ball is on your left side. You should have gone for a shot there. Atkinson in a tussle here with Walford. The smaller man comes out with the advantage via the free kick route. Just walking away from it is Trey Bennett. And he leaves it to Ramsey. Ramsey looking to swing this one in. Hopefully trying to get his captain and Mackison, either one of them, on the actual football, getting a touch to it. I'm sure you all are enjoying our coverage here. Well, let's hope you are. Ramsey. Clearance by JC once more. Poor delivery by Ramsey. Bennett. Howell, smartly, gives his players some breathing space, cool per things off. Perfectly done by Howell, understanding that there was nobody behind him, just allowed that one to go into touch. Rochester has gone deep for it. McGee has been hugely quiet in this game, and it's... The secret is now out. Antonel <laughs> Mullings has the marking job on him. Until Maggie moves from that part of the pitch, then Mullings will always seem to be in that zone, marking him. Oh, Mackison was playing? Yes, he was. He is. It's been very quiet for the 20 minutes we've played so far, the 22 minutes we've played so far. Wall of the Sacklin variety. Intelligent play there from Javain Brown, the captain, on the night co-captain. Grant. 
clash of the sixes. Tajay Reynolds from JC. Spreading it wide to his captain, Malik Howell. Now McGee. Wall. Rochester. JC looking menacing. As they skip around the Kingston College danger area, if you like. Thomas tried that play once before, it didn't come off. There he steps in the middle, and, and Norman Campbell is remonstrating with Thomas. He has tried it on so many occasions, and they have not come off. Campbell, as well as Coach Coley, having a go at Shanil Thomas. Delveron Simpson with that firm, aggressive header. McGee skips away from one, trying to skip away from Grant. The referee says, no, play on, continue. Nothing's wrong with that play, according to the referee. They do it again, JC. Howell. Here he is again. Tyreek McGee. Campbell is the target. Trey Bennett cut that one out. Mackinson. A hat trick scorer in Mobe. Almost at the same time last week, he was in motion. Maybe, at a, well, he had scored two goals by this time last week. Shanil Thomas, looking a bit clumsy on the football field. McGee. Rochester skips to the middle of the park and looks for Captain Howell. He finds him beautifully. Right on to him was Reed. But Howell slips. Not so sure if it rained earlier today, but we've seen one or two of the players slipping over on that middle side of the field there. End-to-end -end action between these two teams. It's difficult to really carve out a way because, as was mentioned, both teams understand each other so well, so every single player has been nullified by each other. Players being in positions and just understanding each play like a chess game. Kingston College, for them, this might feel like home, as they say, they're just down the road. A good 200 meter sprint, and you're at the school. Delveron Simpson brings it out for JC. McGee now looking to play the role of passer in chief. He's been frustrated by his marker, no question about it. Either team just nullifying each other. Again, it allows for little to no room between any of them to make any passes. As we see, McGee being frustrated by all the people who he has come in contact with, most noticeably Anthony Mullins on that left-hand side, hasn't left him an inch. And if you nullify McGee, you nullify a huge chunk of the Jamaica College free-flowing game. Because a lot of what they do go through him. Simpson with another strong tackle. Ramsey looking for that long range pass, which was cut out by Malik Howell. Atkinson. Now JC has the ball. Thomas kicked over in front of the referee once more. And again, referee Leon Brown says, play on. He's probably thinking that Thomas is playing too slight as a centre forward, as is the coach of Jamaica College, Miguel Coley. McGee. McGee screaming at referee Leon Brown. I'm thinking no. he's screaming at, screaming his, at his player. Yes, I thought he was in disagreement with what the referee did. Screaming at his player. Yes. A little trigger yes. by yeah. his he opposite number. 
Trayvon Reed on that side, showing him that I can do that too, McGee. Yes. Power clearance there by Brown. You didn't see Thomas coming. Delveron Simpson. Delveron Simpson and Nathan Hunter are two powerhouses in the heart of the Jamaica College defense. They're so aggressive when they're approaching the football. A little read. Still read. Took a deflection. And the pace of the ball was taken off by that deflection. And it made life much easier for goalkeeper Kyra Williams. Williams in goal has him in tested. And one of the challenges is for goalkeepers, either himself or Rodriguez. If you've not been tested in games like these, then you may have a challenge. That one ball that comes to you, it may be difficult to deal with. And because we broadcast to such a wide audience and out of country, we just like to put things in perspective for those who are not here. It's a strong possibility, Owen, as you already know, that these two teams could meet yet again in another crucial final. Fourth time around, <laughs> possibly. This is the third time, and there may be a possibility that that, that can meet a fourth time. They have split the first two meetings. The winner tonight will take the lead again. Harry Williams. We're approaching the half hour mark in this game already. It was just a short time ago I watched Jamaica College warming up over on the far side and Kingston College just making their way into the venue. All of a sudden we have played 30 minutes almost in this game. Mackison needs to come alive. So the key men in this game have been kept relatively quiet. Mrs. McGee and Mackison. Here's McGee right on cue. Twisting and turning. Mullins right beside him, sticking to him like white to rice. Here is Grant. Holding up the ball, making sure he picks out the right pass. Has he done so with Reed? Reed picks out Atkinson. Teeing it up for Grant. A slipping, a player slipping all over the park. There you go again. Some soft spots out there, Owen, clearly. Certainly the moisture coming on the park and even though the pitch is flat, it allows uh, some of the players to be slipping and probably underfooting the conditions, the type of footwear that they're in may not necessarily be the most conducive to this type of football park. But nonetheless, it's a good one. As you can see, a slide challenge coming in from the number eight player. Kevin Rochester. And uh, you're, not, you're not in our picture, but I can tell you, Miguel Coley had an almighty go at Sacklin Wall. He gave him a heavy mouth a while ago. Telling his team to pretty much wake up. <laughs> He's been telling them that. Rodriguez has not touched this ball in a while. Here's Reed, looking to kickstart this latest KC foray into the JC area. And Captain Howell standing in the way. Strong, def strong defensive work from Rochester, just doing what he needs to do. McGee, getting some help here from Taji Reynolds. McGee, nowhere to go, everywhere he looks. In close proximity, their white shirts. And because of that, the ball was given away. He was forced into that error. The Kingston College players, so far, they have him, they have him worked out. Ramsey. Grant. He packs a powerful kick in that right foot of his. Charged down there on that occasion by Nathan Hunter. Tried to go for the curler instead, but was watched all the way and blocked. Again, each team just nullifying each other. Nothing really separating both teams so far. And would you believe it? 
Tyrese Lock. He's been warmed up for Jamaica College. The defender, the number three, wasn't happy with what he saw in Delveron. And he's been talking to him consistently, Coach Coley. So probably our strategy is just to have your opposite number warm up. That will send a message to you, Wayne. Certainly. Ramsey. Twisting and turning. No one in close proximity. So took his own little time and picked out Trey Bennett. But that pass from Rashawn Mackison was just too much to ask of Atkinson. Difficult for Atkinson, even though he's a speedy player down this right-hand side. It was an overhit pass by Mackison. He now needs to wake up and get himself in the contest. Haven't seen much of him for 33 minutes, but we understand that he's a big-time footballer. And generally in these games, as we saw with Demar James, they pop up when it matters most. Jamaica College shading the possession. 52% to 48. Here's Kingston College. Grant on top of the area. Twisting. A chance for Casey to take the lead. And they do. Fabian Grant. Finally. The Purples from North Street are celebrating over on the far side. Make no mistake, they're wearing full white tonight. But they're just as deadly. They lead by a goal to nail in minute 35. Fabian Grant rewarding Coach Bernard for a starting spot. He hasn't been playing the typical football that we're accustomed to seeing him play. But tonight, he has come up plumps, turning his defender and slotting home brilliantly with his left boot, doing what he's supposed to do. Again, in that position, we spoke of Mackison and how important he is. That pass essentially broke the entire defense free. Just one touch, and again, Fabian Grant, with his composure, ensure that Kingston College is now 1-0 up. Jose Mourinho says, when Romela Lukaku doesn't score, he could still be the best player on the field, simply because if he's locked out by the defenders, he does the next best thing. And that's link up well with the players around him, and that's what Rashawn Mackison did just now. We spoke that he needed to get in and on, in on the action. And essentially what we saw was Mackison playing provider. Being that number 10 player, just laying it off and ensuring that he linked up well. And it was decisive. Here's the goal scorer. Had a below par game in Mobe. Tonight though, he's looked a player transformed, a player reborn and a player on the score sheet. Confidence built. And goals like these will give you that, Fabian Grant. We know how comfortable and competent he is. Kingston College, they look up for this one tonight. And what's impressive about these two teams, they are extremely fit. You're not going to see them, the intensity dip tonight. <laughs> not at all. At least not when they meet. Here's a goal scorer, Grant. No doubt we'll be looking for a second. Still Grant. Teasing up. A header! Oh! Atkinson. Inches. Inches of putting Kingston College to nil up. Confidence growing. As you see again, Fabian Grant going down that left hand channel. Dicing inside. Passing it off to Mackison. Probably that's a skewed effort. He wanted to just guide it past goalkeeper, but Atkinson getting a second chance. Just a misdirected head up. Probably didn't expect the ball to fall to him, but should have done better in that position. Thomas only able to keep it in. Cheers getting louder here at Sabina Park. The noise, decibels raising minute by minute they've certainly gone up a few notches and no prize for telling you which side of the stadium is making that noise kingston college they were huffing and puffing eventually the house 
was ripped apart and it was ripped apart by one Fabian Grant he knows how to score against Jamaica College the Walker Cup final last year he provided a peach of a goal and tonight at Sabina Park not as impressive in terms of the quality of the goal but I suppose they weren't the same in gold so Jamaica College will now have to chase the game not many games over their long impressive run in schoolboy football here in Jamaica they've had to come from behind they did it quite a few times this season though trailed against Mona trailed against Stats trailed against Bridgeport trailed against the same Kingston College so they have trained one or two times this season but it's not something that they're used to look at McGee down he, but not out he, he cuts a frustrating figure a frustrated figure excellent defending by Anthony Tom Anthony Mullins on that far left hand side putting in a very good shift the custodian that left footed player and Gene's team up understanding as well that this may possibly be the biggest game of his career. Kingston College got to this stage of the competition last year. And they were beaten at the same venue by... Potential winners. The new the champions, the team that went on to win the title. Jamaica College lost out in the first round to Clarendon College goal from Crecton Charlton that shook the very foundation of Old Hope Road and they're back again this year looking to make it right they know what it is to lay hands on the flow cup nothing new to them and they'll want that feeling once again so the first yellow card of the game who is the referee calling comes out to Trey Bennett calls Trey Bennett just making amends for what his fellow teammate did a wayward pass by Atkinson but Trey Bennett not allowing Sacklein Wall any inch closer to his goal just pulling him down that's what you probably call a professional foul taking one for the team McGee stands over this one he looks to serve up a decider four Jamaica College five Jamaica College players just on the line the 18 yard area the Kingston College defenders pulling them out now they all disperse and the KC crowd is booing Tyreek McGee he is the box office player in Manning Cup football let's put it there heights of frustration under no circumstances you want to see your number 10 player hitting one from that distance that acute of an angle going direct at goal but that sums up his first half so far because he's been outmarked, outmaneuvered, and outmuscled. And the Kingston College has so many weapons, so many attacking weapons. Grant can score, Reed can score, Mackison can score, Atkinson can score. Those are four certain goal scorers. And I suppose if you search, you find more. And that is what possibly could make the difference tonight because of the, I mean Mac is not playing his normal usual game but then they found a goal from another avenue and that could be one of the problems Jamaica College is facing because McGee is almost always popping up in these key games if to it's deliver not for them. For McGee then chances are there's no one else to really deliver the goods while KC has a number of players both on the park and off the park that can come in and deliver and we're talking specifically about big games crunch games because against the smaller teams they can find goal scorers from everywhere but in crunch games like these when there are very small margins it's, it's they don't show too many goal scorers here's Reed KC faithful they're calling for a penalty they were never gonna get that one not today not tomorrow Malik Howell, the JC captain. 
just about uh, two minutes away, two and a half minutes away, plus added time from half time. Rochester. Jamaica College needs some inspiration from somewhere, from someone. Kingston College. Reed delaying the pass. Bennett. Ramsey. Grant looked right behind him. He spotted Norman Campbell in his rear view. Thus, he was able to protect the ball as impressively as he did. Campbell now operating on the right. So, Miguel Coley has shaken things up. He's asked clearly Sacklin Wall to be operating here on the left side. And he's throwing Norman Campbell over on the far side. Playing out the last remaining minutes of this first half with Jamaica College in possession. The referee turned to his assistant referee and I could almost certain to say he showed one minute. Ramsey, we're not yet in that minute. We're still in normal first half time. Kingston College just spraying the passes around, just ensuring that they wear this JC team all the way down to the final minute. Mackinson offside. The flag went up almost immediately. The ball was played. Reynolds. Walford. Simpson, Hunter, Rochester takes it up, they inch closer to the KC area, McGee, a forgettable first half for him, does he have one last bit of magic in this half, no, Reed, asking Grant, to run onto this one, unable to keep it in. In fact, it's a JC throw, and we're now into that one minute of added time. Excellent work by Tajir Reynolds, just tracking with his opposite number six player, Fabian Grant, just to ensure that nothing really comes from that attack. Maybe the last real opportunity to go forward for Jamaica College possibly for either team in this half no the Kingston College player just looking to see if he kept it in and he did and that's the man who did the wonderful marking job on McKee so far in this game Antonil Mullings the whistle will come anytime now the whistle has come and the referee Leon Brown says I've seen enough of the first 45 minutes of 45 minutes in which Kingston College will go back to their dressing room, deserved leaders of this game. Trayvon Reed played a very, very good game so far in the first 45 minutes for, for Kingston College. And uh, they're happy about life at the moment. In the meantime, Tariq McGee has gone over to the officials. Not sure what his complaint is about. Not sure if he's in his right to do so. I suppose whatever his complaints, he would uh, have to make it to his captain and then the captain go across to have a chat with the referee. But it's half time in this game and it's Kingston College who are leading this game by a goal to nil. And the players are having a chat amongst themselves. As we look at the highlights from the first 45 minutes as referee Leon Brown gets got the game going. Kingston College showed first and that was a shot from Atkinson. Well held by the goalkeeper. A little live wire. Norman Campbell testing his range. That sailed high over the bar. Kingston College 
as Captain Javain Brown taking a knock to the left shoulder while Reed continues to probe. Here's a cap, here's a Grant twisting and turning and finally finding the Jamaica College cage. The difference so far between the teams tonight and those are the happy supporters wearing purple and white and those in multicolored amongst them as Grant produces a celebration to match. His teammates joining him and he went for a second. Kingston College coming perilously close there. Header from Atkinson that could easily have seen them go on 2-0 up. And that's all she wrote, says referee Leon. As we look at the halftime statistic, the most important of, which is the top line. But as we look at the possession percentage, Jamaica College edged it. Shots on target, it was all Kingston College. Shots off target, Casey leading in that one as well. And there were 13 fouls in total. Kingston College judged to be the more aggressive. And the only yellow card on the night has gone to Antonel Mullins. So, that's that for the first half of the second semi-final. They're playing to face St. Elizabeth Technical in the Flow Super Cup final. So we're going to go for a break. When we come back, we'll continue our look back at the first 45 minutes in semi-final two. You're watching the Flow Super Cup live on Flow Sports. The Flow Super Cup is brought to you by... Enjoy.
You're watching the Flow Super Cup live on Flow Sports. The Flow Super Cup is brought to you by. Oh, without you now, this is what it feels like. All righty then, thank you very much. And um, there's a, a cutaway of the crowd. It is a bumper crowd here at Sabina Park. And um, as you'll see, the scoreline there, Kingston College leading by one goal to nil. The second half shall be even more exciting. But right now with us, we have Michaela Francis, brand marketing manager of Coca-Cola Brands. Good to have you. Thanks for having me, Orville. All right, great, great. Now, I, I suppose the first question I'm asking is, how, how are you enjoying uh, the whole atmosphere? Boy, nerves <laughs> and excitement turned up. It, it, Lots it of vibe down here. Certainly is. Why has Coca-Cola decided to, to partner with the Flow Super Cup? Well, Coca-Cola has been committed to sports for many, many years. In fact, particularly football. You know, we have major partnerships with the FIFA. And we have sponsored so many programs and so many teams um, globally. And of course, Jamaica is no different, you know. Right. Being able to participate in this way with Flow Super Cup means everything to us. All right. Uh, what is it that um, the, the, the fans of Coca-Cola can expect at, at these games? Well, we have <laughs> lots happening here. Well, we have the Coca-Cola score a goal competition where if you go on field halftime and you participate, once you score that goal, you have the chance to win a really cool Coca-Cola Bluetooth headphones. Okay, courtesy great. Courtesy of us, of course. All right, the big final is, is, is next week. What are there any special plans for Coca-Cola um, and, and the many people consume your product um, for, the, for the big finale? Certainly. So as the presenting partners for Flow Super Cup this year, Coca-Cola is not only about football, but we're, we're about Christmas and we believe in sharing and exciting our fans and engaging them in a very special way. As we close out the Super Cup season, we welcome the Christmas season. So we're inviting fans to come out and look out for us. We can't tell you all that we have in store, but we will be making the season very bright for everyone. Indeed. I'm going to ask you the last question. Kingston College is leading by one goal to nil. Um, tell me if Kingston College or GAC will win. I know you might tell me that you're not that big into football, but sometimes beginner's intuition is key. So KC or JC? Oh boy, Orville, you know, as a Coca-Cola brand marketing person, I, I really can't say. You can't say. I, I think the better team will win. All right, good. All right, thank you very much, Michaela Francis, brand manager um, at Coca-Cola. Good to have you as part of our show. Thanks for having me as well. All right, well, lots and lots of things happening here. There you see Miguel Coley having the last minute um, pep talk with his team. Um, Coley as studious as ever, and the Jamaica College team um, looking fairly pensive. And um, there is a shot of the, the, the crowd there, um, people relaxing for what should uh, turn out to be a very, very exciting second half. It has been as interesting a football game uh, as we've had all season. I'll tell you something, Owen Hill, who slips into the analyst chair. We, we sometimes take what these schoolboys are doing for granted. I'm looking at the game and I'm saying this is a high quality football game, but the, the, the Stets has already made their way to the final. Take us through which of the two teams are likely to get there and what have they done so far? Well, based on what we've seen, Calabar, they would have been playing high quality football, like you mentioned. They got by Carinan College, but then they met up into St. Elizabeth Technical, who got the better of stats. Stets got the better of Calabar today, um, but then we look right. at the goal. Yes. Brilliant work by Fabian Grant being employed in a false number nine role. Sliced and diced the defenders and then slotting home perfectly with a good left footed ground. And that's what you want to see from your big time player. So, Markison pretty much was out of the game for about 40 minutes, but then linked up well with Fabian Grant and that sort of combination allowed for KC to be one nil up. We don't often give coaches the kind of credit it deserves. I remember I saw you at Stadium East one day and I said, this Fabian Grant needs to get involved more in the game. And then on our right to Mabay, um, for last week, you said, don't be surprised if he goes up front. Um, looks like you're a prophet. He certainly played up front, but I didn't think that maybe that would be the ideal role for him. But congrats to Coach Bernard. He put him up front and he has certainly made it count. Strategically, Coach Bernard must be given all the props because he understands that Miguel Coley is also a tactician because what JC did was to nullify a lot of the attacks provided by KC. So instead of having Mackison all the way up top by himself, isolated, he now employed um, Fabian Grant in that false nine role and linking up with Mackison. I think it would work perfectly well. 
with the two wide players, Reed and Atkinson, chipping in ever so often. And I think it's causing a lot of problems for GSE and their defensive setup. Jamaica College will come back. There's no way that they are not going to be formulating plans, even as we speak, to come back from this 1-0 um, um, lead at, at halftime. What, ex what exactly do you expect from Coley? And I suppose, what is it that you also expect from Ludlow Bernard and Casey? Well, as you said, Miguel Coley is a tactician. So, I mean, even in the halftime break, he had his clipboard looking at it and pretty much pointing out strategies to his team. What he has been doing is employing two wide players and a central striker. Shaniel Thomas hasn't been delivering the goods, so he's now switching him out. McGee hasn't had the best of games so far, so I think more players will be designed around McGee. Now, moving out from this right-hand position and being employed in a free role, getting that rain to go all over the football park and do what he does best. He's a magician with the ball at his feet, and that's exactly what the players are going to be designed around. So if you're Lola Bernard, you should be thinking, how can I ensure that I get a second goal in order to solidify what I have? Because GSE will be coming out for the next 20 minutes very, very hard. As you can see in the camp, right. um, a lot of frustration and complaining between a, a the A very animated players. McGee who was seen talking to the referees at halftime. And you don't often see a player while the halftime whistle goes and he's walking over the officials, having a word or two with the officials. But I like to see that. It means that they are highly passionate about this. But maybe Coley just probably need to calm them down a little bit. But I, like, I, I certainly like what I'm seeing. Fired up, definitely. Yes. Um, and that's what you want to see from schoolboys, especially when you represent either Kingston College or Jamaica College. When you play these games, it means more than just to you. For the entire fans here, um, they're here to support. So I think Maggie is fired up for that. He wants to play well, but he's heavily policed. Marked defensively by the entire left side of um, the defense for Casey. So he wants to break free and obviously wants to have that game. Yeah. That the, he's there he is complaining again. Wonder what this could be about. It seems like there's some internal struggle between himself yeah. and Rochester. Rochester is normally the link-up player in the middle of the park um, for JC, but Maggie hasn't been getting any of these balls, so obviously it's going to be a difficulty for him, and he's complaining. He's complaining bitterly, and you see Ian Forbes getting involved. We're not seeing coach uh, Miguel Coley at the moment, so I wonder what um, the talismanic Maggie could be so unhappy about. Doesn't seem to be too happy with everybody, including the coach. Maybe I'm I'm reading too much into it, but he certainly needs to calm down. He's the JC top player, and you wouldn't want him to go back into the second half in that kind of mood. Well, that's what happened, Orville. When he played, when he tend to play big games and you're being marked out, then obviously you're going to get frustrated. We saw a little bit of frustration in Mackison early on, but he just fell back and got more mature in his game and then linked up the player. So obviously to work in for KC, um, JC now needs to sort themselves out. All right, so it's 1-0. Kingston College leads at um, halftime. We're about to start the second half. And without further ado, we throw upstairs to Wayne Walker, and Owen Hill will join him pretty soon. So, the second half is on its way. The officials converge in the middle of the park, and they're getting ready to get this thing going once more. So, the Jamaica College team recrimination and uh, they're having a big chat about what happened in the first half and uh, I'm sure by the time they get back into the flow things would be okay or so they hope So we're waiting on the teams to make their way back onto the field. The Jamaica College team taking its own little time to get back onto the field. The referee, Leon Brown. Just making sure that he's got everything under control. And the Kingston College will get us on the way. Ramsey and Mackison standing over the ball. Now we are on the way for the second half. Ramsey.
There is Reed. He's trying to skip away from one too many players. There were three players around him. And shortly, Jamaica College will be taking off Sackland Wall. Wall. And Gavin Thorpe, who scored in Mobile last week, will have an opportunity to have a go at it. So the change will be effected anytime now. And the coach, Miguel Coley, was not happy with Sackling Wall from in the first half. And he has decided to give last week's goal scorer, Gavin Thorpe, an opportunity to see if he could bring JC back into this game. Owen Hill has rejoined us in the coming to position. to Sackley and Wall. So he's going to challenge the midfielders of Kingston College, Priestley to be exact. And now he's going to be that centre forward that gives the defenders a lot of trouble because of his strength and size. A bit of ice being applied to the Back of the head of one of the KC players, it looks like Trayvon Reed. Went down from a heavy challenge. He's good again and making his way back. That's Trayvon Reed making his way back onto the field of play in short staff. In the meantime, his team kicks on college. Goes on another of its attacking movement. This is a goal scorer, the man who has provided the pivotal moments in this game, Fabian Grant. Many people were expecting him to be a top man for KC this season. And so far, he's building into a nice season, a national player as well. Here's Kingston College looking for a second goal. And Reed almost immediately is back on the field. He's back in the action as well. Brilliant cross from the number 12 player, Anthony Mullins. Just whipping that one, linking up with Trayvon Reed down this left-hand side. But again, just nobody on the end of it. Atkinson really wasn't a direct shot on goal, it just fell to him and he just put his body in it. Here's the captain, Malik Howell. Normal service has resumed. Antonel Mullings, he has a specific job tonight. Heavy and, policing. And is he doing it well? No, he's not. He's doing it excellently. Brown, the captain, also playing a steady game tonight for Kingston College. It's very difficult to find a KC player tonight who is not touching the, the heights. They're all playing well. He needs to now start to play well as well. And a pushed over in the area from Chenille Thomas. Pushing over Atkinson. Free kick for Kingston College all day, every day. Questionable change by Miguel Coley. I thought that Sackley and Wall was doing a good job at the top. Um, linking up players, probably more so. Thomas, Shaniel Thomas, wasn't doing the selected job. However, I'm no coach. Um, and he understands his team. He clearly would have strategized for the second half. But from a JC standpoint, based on what we saw in the first half, um, Shaniel Thomas needs to step up if they are expected to get anything from this game. Kingston College charging towards the JC 18 yard area again. They've got a resulting corner kick to be struck from the far side. Speed and precision all the way from this right side. Kingston College making every attempt at just pushing forward, looking for that second goal. The white shirts are dominating the 18 yard area. Well, not quite. The blue shirts are back in numbers as well. A chance. Oh! It's at the back of the net. And Kingston College have gone further ahead. That second goal, a whipped in cross from Horace Ramsey. Got a slight touch, but fell in the back of the net. And clearly, none of the players owning, but it's between Priestley and Ramsey as this replay show that slight touch whipped in well delivered 
comfortably. Oh, it's actually a touch off the GAC defender, Walford, the number 12 player. And his team is now down two goals to nil. Will it go down as an own goal? Well, it should. Five minutes into the second half, and Kingston College have increased their lead and looking further still to add more or pile more misery on Jamaica College. Totally different Jamaica College team than the one that played in the Walker Cup final. They flew out of the dark blue box block in a flash. And by you know it, Kingston College was down 2-0 at halftime. They came, tried to come back in the second half and tried as they may. JC held on to win that trophy tonight. It's a totally, totally different story. It's Kingston College who is asking all the questions and pretty much running the show here tonight. Throwing to the fame, the purples, operating in full white tonight. Throw there, Antonel Mullins must be given a huge chunk of credit. Tonight he has kept schoolboy football's most tricky player and probably most influential player in terms of his impact on teams. Quiet, literally quiet, having him cur cursing amongst, having them cursing amongst themselves well into the halftime break and even at the resumption here's norman campbell trying to spark the jc team into life it's going to need a lot more than that they're trailing by two goals to nil and their chances of a final spot in the final of the flow super cup is withering away by the seconds still though lots of football still to be played here's mullings top 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 job tonight and for once, he leaves McGee. Let's see what McGee will do. Campbell. This is Thomas. He needs, he needs to give Jamaica College a big game. Gives the ball away again. Davian shakes. Robbed in the middle of the park. Kingston College. Stream menacingly forward. Lots of space in front of Reed. He can dip one way than the next, or he can take it alone and invite the tackle. He did neither. And some very good work there from Nathan Hunter in the JC defense. Saw what Trayvon Reed was trying to do. He's trying to shimmy the player. Should have gotten something out of that one. Probably a shot on goal or something, but not necessarily a corner from that advantage that was played. Good work by Ramsey in the middle of the park. He's been one of the standout players at Kingston College, just holding his own, coming in that zone and just spraying passes himself and the 21 Kasim Priestley corner turned in by Priestley right on cue but behind for a goal kick to Jamaica College both players have been having monstrous games last game they played well today they showed up again and paying dividends to Lola Bernard and his tactics he didn't shift a beat with this team I put it to you, Jamaica College will probably have to be have to play the best second half that they have played this season if they're going to beat Kingston College tonight. The Kingston College team is running the show. They are doing most things right tonight. This man, though, can do that, of which I ask. His first shot after 53 minutes of football on target, and he's their prime, their box office man. The blue chip man. Rodriguez answering well to whatever McGee would have asked of him. Dangerous way to concede a free kick. And it, it, it puts into perspective what we've been talking about this Jamaica College and the lackluster the way they are going about business tonight. The free kick was won and they just turned with heads down in the ground no urgency no running back to try to prepare for it talk about ramsey and his strength from dead ball situation normally when he gets these he's a free kick specialist excellent player this is right within horace ramsey's range and he stands menacingly behind it the referee just telling the jamaica college players stand 10 yards away, don't worry about it. The kick will not be taken until I use my whistle. Now Ramsey steps up, he gets it over the wall, but unfortunately for him, over the bar as well. 
got it over the wall, couldn't get it under the bar. Did well to get it up and over, but just didn't dip in time. Not many teams this season can come from 2-0 down against KC to win a football match. If there's one team that can do it, it is Jamaica College. Saying it is one, they just have to do it. We saw 2-0 come back earlier this afternoon between Steps and Calabar. Does JC have the necessary firepower? Does JC have the skill sets? Does JC have the will? This may be a rhetorical question, Owen, but do you think the JC's the JC performance we're seeing tonight comes down to one man, Antonel Mullins? Certainly comes down to him. I think he has had a masterful game on this left side. He has kept the main man at bay. Mackinson, he has been quiet as well. He lets fly under pressure. Still didn't settle himself to get a full-fledged shot and goal. But that in itself sums up the kind of night he's having as well. Anything he gets a chance to shoot at, he will. Because he's been having an awful night tonight, Rashawn Mackison. Yes, he provided the pass that led to the goal. But outside of that, precious little from him tonight. Again, not the type of performance he's accustomed to having or seeing himself have. But he, hopefully, from a coach's standpoint, will understand his importance in the contest and get his head in the game um, because he's an important figure in this Kingston College team. They need to understand as well that GSC won't let up and one goal will get them back in the contest. Campbell! Won't beat Rodriguez with that one. Low grounder tried to go to the left of the goalkeeper but it was a miscued effort. Good intention, pass played out by McKee. He's the deciding factor in this GC team. Whenever he plays well, the team plays well. Whenever he plays off, the team is off. And tonight, so far, 57 minutes plus, he's been off. Nothing going JC's way tonight. Gavin Thorpe on that occasion looking for a free kick. The referees have to play on. And Kingston College takes the ball and moves forward. Reed. Using Mullings as a decoy to cut in the middle. And suddenly, the Kingston College players are just choking the ball around. They're leading by two goals to nil. We're approaching the hour mark. And the, the clock is not JC's friend at the moment. The harder it gets, the more the minutes tick away. Rochester unable to keep that one in. This has been a good performance from Kingston College tonight. Ball going high into the night sky. Delverone Simpson. The only team in schoolboy football this season that can still win all four trophies. But they need to get it right and get it right quickly. Not only is Mullings doing an absolutely wonderful marking job on McGee, but it's getting under McGee's skin. He's becoming frustrated and he is flashing out and his body language is sulking because he's not having things the way he normally would. Excellent work by Mullings again, just not letting up. Knowing that Anthony, knowing that McGee is a very good player, but still just sticking to the task. Here is Kingston College again, almost always on the football. Reed, can he keep this one in? No, can't. Intentional by Ramsey, just taking some weight from that pass and hoping that he would have connected with his wingman. JC charging down the channel. Campbell. Crowded out by the KC 
defense. Mackinson, the only man not behind the ball for KC and JC trying to prise their way through this almost impregnable KC defense. That's what it's looking like tonight. There is your goal scorer. Well, one of them. KC has gone further ahead via an own goal. Scuffle players, coaches. It takes nothing to tick these two teams off. Absolutely nothing. It's always on the bubble with these two teams. And just now, we're seeing Nathan Hunter in the middle of this. And Reed is also a part of this flare-up first flashpoint of the game right on the hour mark and referee Leon Brown is trying to sort things out with the assistant of his assistants and they should get this one back to normal in short order Ian Forbes the manager in the white cap there for JC he's out there as well the players have utmost respect for him and the fans just looking wondering what's going on are we gonna spoil what has been a good game so far Lunder Bernard just showing his team that he's in it as well he wants to win this contest ewan scott who is in charge of this game and uh, he's trying to bring things under control get things in order of course the floor representative stephen miller is also in close proximity uh, mcgee and reed having a chat about it and uh, JC and the Kingston College substitutes are having a laugh about it. So they'll tell you at the end of the day, it's football. We've seen this all the time. The important thing is to get back to playing. Now the referee is having a chat with a player who is going to give a yellow card who is not even on the field. And we want to see that number because he's already cautioned before coming onto the field. That's the number eight player, Renato Campbell. So if he comes onto the field, He'll be coming onto the field, a man with a caution beside his name. He's seeing the funny side of it, or is he embarrassed? Probably a bit of both. Normally a starter was benched for this contest, and his team is up two goals to the good. Probably not a happy camper. Minutes are ticking away. Delverone Simpson giving the ball away again. Mullins, the tormentor in chief tonight. Here's Campbell in the center of the field. He brings Rochester into the play with him. Rochester will go for a long range effort. That's a desperate effort. Desperate. And he was stretching, his head wasn't over the ball, and it, it was going nowhere and getting there fast. Not a good kick by Rochester, not his favored peg either generally uses his left foot to good effect but was stretching all the way and now we see Kingston College making their first substitution the number 20 player coming in Shamar Bloomfield and the number three player coming off Louis Atkinson and this was the substitution that was made last week in Bobay the last time we saw a Bloomfield on the field he was scoring for Kingston College and really coming on and being a real, real, real influence against Rossi's last week in Mobe. Being rewarded for another top performance last week. Bloomfield coming on, going on that left-hand side. Last week, he came on and within seconds found the back of the net. Let's see if he has the same fate Stets. this evening. Stets laying in wait. They are already into the final. They beat Calabar in sudden death penalty in semi-final one after 2-2 two -two at the end of regular time grind you no extra time at the moment it doesn't seem as if we're heading anywhere near there but we did say it in the same game in the first game as well when Calabar led by two goals to nil and we ended up there there's McGee and Mullings as well now you can't call McGee without calling Mullings they're almost like twins now Heavily policed by Mullings. Mullings actually liking the job of marking Maggie. If you can say that you've marked out one of the top players of the schoolboy football season, then you'd have done a good job. Rodriguez. 
ball falls, a chance for JC, it comes up across the frame, and the goalkeeper falls down on it. Tumbling over there with Malik Howell, the captain as well, and the referee is going right in the midst of it. He's dipping for his pocket, is he? Certainly. Did something take place after the ball was under the body of the goalkeeper? We don't know. It almost seems as if the referee was dipping for his pocket. Let's see them sort this one out. Because he ran onto the scene of the crime as if something dangerous had happened. Let's see how this plays out. A beautiful ball whipped in. Anthony Mullins just clipping it at goalkeeper Rodriguez. Probably could have asked for a foul there and then gathering it. But... Howell just running in and diving in on the goalkeeper. I think that's what caused the Kingston College players to get angry. Was the ball dead or was it still alive when Howell got there? It seems as if it was dead. Keeper was comfortable on it. But again, good sense prevailed. So far, referee Leon Brown would have been doing a very good job because marshalling these two teams and the energies between them, it's no easy task. Priestley giving Grant a sprinting job, which he was unable to do effectively. Here is Campbell breaking away a chance for Jamaica Collins to go 2 1. No! They're filed by Rodriguez. had two water written all over it. How did he keep that one out? GSC on the counter, pushing. This is Rochester, back to goal. Walford. A long, loping step, kicked over on the edge of the box. A free kick today, tomorrow, every day of the week. JC has suddenly found new life. The boys from Old Hope Road has they're up the ante. They understand that their season is coming to a close in the Super Cup. They're down two goals to the good. Shaniel Thomas should have done better with that one, but blocked off the line. And now McGee stands over it. Can either deliver it dangerously in that area. He has a curler, can whip it, can cause some problems for Rodriguez and company in defense for Kingston College. Let's see how how they handle this one. A free kick from an acute angle. Uh, let's see how McGee, what he does with this one. Will he go for a direct shot? That's what he did, that's what he did, you know? And it's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. When you have the skills of Tyreek McGee, it's possible, impossible is nothing. And he forced the save out of the goalkeeper. I just thought that's what he was going to do because it was almost impossible to do anything else if you're going to be effective based on the angle from where the shot was taken. And he has run across to take the corner himself. Now looking to whip this one in. Howell, uh, overhead kick. And guess well. who was there to stop that one? Anthony <laughs> Mullins. <laughs> Whipped at the near post, Mullings was there, equal to the task. The tormentor in chief. He's been having a brilliant game so far. And we can't overemphasize how well he's been performing. Walford forced back into his own, further up his own area. Here they come again, Kingston College. Free kick. Very easy call for referee Leon Brown. It happened right under his nose. Quickly taken. Reed. Cuts away from the goalkeeper. Ah! Oh, perilously close. He had to get that shot off the moment he beat the goalkeeper because the defenders were bearing down on him. And the rush to get that one off. He miscued the ball. Cheeky pass from Ramsey again. Linking up well. Trayvon Reed. Did well, had a beautiful run behind the defenders. But just that final product was missing, lacking. But the intention was there and Kingston College riding high.
20 minutes, under 20 minutes to save their Super Cup season, Jamaica College. A brand new trophy on offer this season. Free kick to JC. They've committed bodies forward. Six players in blue shirts occupying the 18-yard area as Norman Campbell gets ready to float this one in. Rodriguez directing traffic in that crucial area. Will it flow? Yeah. Well, it had to punch it. A double-fisted punch by Rodriguez. Casey still not yet getting the ball away from their danger area. Now they can. In fact, they can launch a counter-attack. And it's McGee who is chasing back. Reed. Still Reed. Mackinson. They're not working together. The front line there for Casey. Not linking up well. I'm sure the Casey players would have wanted that back. There's Casey. Ramsey. Trying to turn on the style. Reed and Mackinson offside themselves. The referee, of, the assistant referee on the other far side. Players now enjoying themselves. Horace Ramsey being that boss in the middle of the park, twisting and turning. He's having a, a game. Grant. Mackinson. Goalkeeper. Kyrie Williams. Easy take for him. McGee. Now to Rochester. Rochester having time even to beckon to Norman Campbell to get himself in a good position to accept the football and the attack continues for JC courtesy of Walford Campbell takes over the shift excellent coverage by Shakes both of them linking well Bloomfield coming on and doing some strong defensive work by Brown, the captain, Mackinson. I wonder if a goal is in the game for him. Being crowded out all game long, but still just trying to stay in the contest. Similarly to what we're seeing with Tyreek McGee, Mackinson is having one of those games where he's been frustrated. And Norman Campbell taking the ball out of that crowded area. Jamaica College making another substitution. Devoy Daly will be summoned to duty. In the meantime, Rochester and McGee linking up well. Norman Campbell a part of that as well. Chenille Thomas just pushing over Anthony Mullins. Going all the way through the players back. Positionally aware, Anthony Mullins is again being in that right place at the right time. He's having a boss of a game on this left side. McGee just trying to link up with Thomas, but Thomas just not having that game that you expect the centre forward or a attacking player to be having. Maki playing in Reed. He's policed though by the JC captain Malik Howell. Now with McGee coming deep to collect. Bloomfield, the substitute. Did the very same thing last week in Mobe. Came on and excited the crowd. Just now unable to keep it in. Throw they over the far side to down. JC. On that far side, Bloomfield just putting in a heavy shift. You see another substitution now being made by Jamaica College. Devoy Daly, v. Devoy Daly coming on. Daly. Devoy and Daly. Nathan Hunter is the player there. Today. Well, Hunter is limping. So, let's see. Have they got their numbers mixed up? It seems so. Because Hunter is almost off the field, only to be, turned, to be told that he must turn back. So who is he? Who is 
Daly going to replace? The number four player, Delvaro and Simpson. Delvaro and Simpson is a player to make way. And he's exiting the field over on the far side, just not to hold up the time. And now, Daly is on. So that's the boy Daly, the number 15 player for Jamaica College. Entering the park. Another midfielder. So we see the strategy of Jamaica College now shifting. They're down two goals to the good. Behind the eight ball, they're now employing some attacking players, pulling some defensive players, and going for some attacking players. Throw to Kingston College, and they've taken a day to get over here. This is Mullings. Ramsey, an almighty tussle there with the two Jamaica College players, Howell and Rochester. In the end, he was bundled out of it. Reynolds. If Casey should go on to win this game tonight, it would feel like they've won the Super Cup. That's how victory over Jamaica College would feel, and vice versa. Such is the rivalry. This is McGee. Good control. Oh. The end product was disappointing. Sums up his night, sums up the entire GSE performance. That ball was played sumptuously to him over the top. A player of Maggie's quality should have done way, way better with that one. Albeit left footed, but the ball was played to him. Should have either gone direct on goal or passed back that one to an unrushing player, but he went for the side netting essentially. Another substitution here by Kingston College. And there. Bringing on their number seven man, Omar Thompson. And uh, Trayvon Reed will be the player substituted. Good shift from Trayvon. Excellent shift by the number 11 player. Impact player normally comes off the bench, but was trusted with the responsibility of starting and running at the defenders from Jamaica College. Definitely doing what he's supposed to do. Gets Still a earning himself a yellow card, though. Yes. Gets a congratulatory hug there, Trevon. It's taking too long to come out of the park. Clearly, Leon Brown thought he was trying to waste more time than necessary. So, Reed getting himself in the book of Leon Brown. Confirmation of Trevon Reed's yellow card. And you look at Thompson go. Mackinson. He's off tonight. Certainly off. Normally he would have gone for a curler in that regard, but just wanting to blast that one in the roof. But then it just not getting the opportunity. JC players closing him down. He just needs to understand that these are games that he needs to just link up and get players. Um, in under action. Yeah. Allow the game to come to him. Right. And if it's not working out for you, then you play provider. Right. Because you know when you have an off night, you're a striker. And I suppose he, he, he's due one of these nights. He's, he's been carrying this Kingston College team as much as any of the other Kingston College players this season. And I suppose you can afford him an off night. 22 goals across all competitions. Yes, you can afford him an off night. Only that players like those like these kind of occasion. They want to shine on these big stages. Here's Norman Campbell. Rochester. McGee. Good sharing of the football by JC. Walford! Should have done better with that one. Got it at about eight yards out. Went for the two poor. He started to play. Good linking up. Played back to him and again being closed down. Charged down by shakes the defender made it more difficult than it seemed though so coach bernard shouting instructions from the sideline knowing all too well that this is a gsc team he can't let up on and ludlow bernard all week has been very very focused he's been called for interviews by various media entities and he says listen my mind is on only one thing and that's the close hooker cup semi-final against Jamaica College. 
And if, if he should go on to win tonight, I'm sure he'll have a very, very, very good night sweep. Thompson. Still Thompson. And the Kingston College fans. Happy about that. Thompson trying to spark some life down this left side. So, under 10 minutes to go in normal time. And the Kingston College now have one foot in the Flow Super Cup final. And if they manage to put the other foot in, then they'll take on St. Elizabeth Technical next week at a venue to be decided. Well, we're now getting a bit of confirmation that it will be right here at Sabina Park. Norman Campbell. Ah! Good effort. There's still life left in this JC team. Still life. About eight plus minutes left in the contest, but Rodriguez shouting at his defenders telling them that they need to ensure that they charge down every single shot on goal. Campbell now breaking free on that left-hand side, but just not able to deliver that final product. Both himself and McGee, they've been having off nights. It's a KC throw. Ludlow Bernard getting ready to make another substitution, giving the, the man who is coming on. That's Nathan Thomas, last minute instruction. Stabilizing the middle of the park, coming in and providing some grit. Normally a start and Nathan Thomas was left out of the fixed jump. And again, some smart showed by Ludlow Bernard as a coach, switching things up drastically, causing sixes and sevens at the back for Jamaica College. Brown, the captain, easily turns away from McGee. Ramsey. Send Bloomfield on his way. Maybe should have played it a bit more directly in front of him as opposed to away, giving him a few more seconds to work. Free kick to JC. Fabian Grant. And referee Leon Brown was right there. I had a word with him while he passed him. The substitution will now be effected. Nathan Thomas coming on. Ramsey coming off. And Ramsey, what, what a wonderful performance from Ramsey tonight. Brilliant kid. Showed up for Kingston College. Top, top, top game from the number nine tonight. He deserves a 10. Certainly a, a, a 10, a score of 10 in terms of his performance. Came in, did what the coach asked him to do. Similar to what we saw last week versus Rossi's at Brings now the stabilizer in the middle of the park. He's on Thomas to come and seal things up for Kingston College. JC showing that there's still life left in the old horse still. McGee, he wants this one for himself. And he's floating around that little pocket. And the Walford shaped as if he was going to go for a shot. No, he does. And the miscues. Brilliant effort by Walford, just wheeling his way in the box. All the players backed off of him. He had an opportunity, could have spanked that one, but just miscued. Here's a chance for Bloomfield. Good save by Kari Williams. JC was almost dead and buried. That third girl would have killed him off, definitely. But it was a good interception, intervention, not even by the goalkeeper, Kari Williams, to keep the score at 2-0. Bloomfield should have done better with that one. Was played in. 
not handled well by the defender who was at the back, number five, Nathan Hunter, gave an opportunity to Bloomfield. Just playing around with the ball and slipped. Bloomfield was played in on goal and should have done better, but in the end, a good save by Carrie Williams. Rolando Barnett is going to be coming on for JC. And if I was reading the lips of Miguel Coley correctly, I heard him say number five, number five, which means he could be taking off Nathan Hunter. But let's see. Or maybe he was asking if there's five minutes remaining. But he did say a five. Let's see, though. Let's not, let's not second guess the coach. Dangerous position. Maggie stands over this one. Let's see what he'll do with this one. He's taking left footed, not enough direction on it. Frustrated performance from Tyreek McGee. Went up and over, tried a curler. But too much, Rodriguez too much had curl on it. covered all the way. So Kingston College, merely four minutes away from booking officially, let me say officially, a spot in the Flow Super Cup because you get the impression they've already done so. The substitution will now be made. And Chanel Thomas has been sacrificed. So he was actually inquiring about the time that's left in the game. And at the time when he made, thought about the substitution, it was five minutes remaining. So Jesse still has the match of the Manning Cup semi-final. And at the end of tonight, if the result, if the scoreline holds, then no school in schoolboy football this season can win all four. Powell, well, Hunter shadowing the ball. Tajay Reynolds strings it across the field. Ball just rolling nicely to Walford. McGee was trying to be a part of the action there. It didn't work out for him. JC keeps possession. Williams, who is largely responsible for the score, being 2 0 now because really, money Bloomfield really should have buried that one. Referee playing the advantage. Thorpe. Still Thorpe. No McGee. And Rochester, well, Rodriguez. He need to move at all. Comfortably collecting that one. McGee just trying to serve up. A ball played over the top. So next week, right here at the same venue. And it's a, another card. It's a yellow card to Walford. Going all the way in on the number 14 player, Trey Bennett. So we're just merely minutes away from the final rights, Kingston College. So we have uh, just about two minutes normal time, then three minutes of added time. So Kingston College in total, five minutes away from officially booking their spot in the Flow Super Cup final. It will be their first. So we'll have two first time finalists and a new champion. We already know that a new champion will be crowned. What we now know is that a first time champion will be crowned as well. So Kingston College just waiting to get the celebration on the way. And the bantering is well and truly on the way. We're in the 90th minute. And, we, and we'll play three minutes plus one minute of added time to that three. <laughs> So that's four minutes of added time. That's four minutes of added time, right. So we're, we're trying to break it down for you. So it's four minutes of added time. So that the Vuvuzelas you hear are going off in the distance. We don't need to tell you who they're going off by and for. That's the famed Purples. They have just a small matter of a few meters to walk to get home tonight and it's going to be a merry merry walk we're now into added time and the confirmation of the four minutes of added time being displayed on the fourth officials numbers chart and 
we've been treated to a game of technical efficiency by Kingston College tonight. And that is why they are going to the final and they are going there to meet St. Elizabeth Technical High School. There's Mullings. He will get an extra piece of chicken tonight <laughs> at dinner. He's really done an absolutely fantastic job in the main. He was largely responsible for JC's off performance tonight simply because he stopped this man, McGee. Rodriguez just punching behind another corner. Certainly my man of the game, Anthony Mullins, did a very big job of marking Tyree McGee and coming up trumps. Here's another, ah, Jamaica College. There's still life in this one. The celebration is almost muted because they know that they still have a long way to go. And it's long because of the time that's remaining. It's 2-1. Malik Howell, the captain, getting the final touch on that one. Fighting all the way to the end. Howell, second time asking. A cross was played in by Tyree McGee. Rodriguez didn't handle that well. And Malik Howell just jumped. Challenge for that one. Ball ended up in the back of the net. Is it too late? Casey buying a few more seconds because they're making another substitution. They're bringing on the number eight, Renata Campbell. And Tyreek McGee makes a substitution for KC. He's taking Fabian Grant off the field himself. <laughs> that was funny. Pushing, understanding that there is some life left into this contest. Tyreek McGee bundled out. He was, in, he was the meat in that sandwich. Kingston College, who we thought were on their way to the Flow Super Cup final. They may very well still be. They face an anxious two minutes from this Jamaica College team. Corner is drama to be had. At the end of this one, in the earlier game, something similar prevailed. Jamaica College, they're not dead. They have 90 seconds to force penalties. And I'm surprised that not all the JC players are in the box. Tantalizing corner. And Kingston College managing to get away from that one. This is Norman Campbell. Will he get a shot? He's inviting the tackle. He's darting to the box. Howell needs a good cross. Jamaica College still alive in the box. They were trying to settle for a corner. But well done by the Kingston College defense. And a free kick won by Jamaica College. Now everybody's going to come back. I'm sure. Anxious moments, nervy. Why is the goalkeeper not there? You can't. There's nothing else he can do. We're nervy on the four minutes. End. We're on the four minutes. About 15 seconds to the good. Tyree Maggie, we saw him hit one to the near post earlier. He went direct. This time, let's see what he will do. Miguel Coley remonstrating on the sideline, telling everybody to go forward. Here's the ball coming in. Kingston College trying to defend. The Blues, a chance. Still Casey under pressure in their own area. And Jamaica College, wow. A free kick again. What do we have here? What drama. This surely is the last kick of the game. Certainly unfolding. Just now, a high boot by the number 20 player, Bloomfield. Giving Jamaica College an opportunity now at goal. There's some deadly free kick specialists on this team. Any given person. I have a very, very strange feeling about this free kick. Tyree McGee. Miguel Coley sits on the igloo. That he, knows that time's is up. he knows that time is up. He knows that this is the last kick of the contest. This is the moment. Nervous. That, that players like McGee, that players like Kahim Paris, that players like Rashawn Mackison live for. 
the entire Sabina Park and the thousands, possibly millions, watching up and down the Caribbean. Look at one man, Tyreek McGee! What a wonderful goal from the little number 10. He produces moments like these every time, every day. And just now, we have seen one outstanding free kick. Well, guess what? Let's pull it back. Offside. Offside being called by the referee. The referee. Leon. And what? drama unfolding here with drama I, of the highest quality. I'm done. I'm I, gone. Offside called by the first assistant, Terence McKenzie. I am done. This is a drunk mic moment. And I tell you what, we're not leaving Sabina Park tonight. We're not going to leave here tonight. The Jamaica College team. They're not about to accept it. The game is over. Kingston College are through to the Flow Super Cup final. What drama. This is not going to end nicely tonight, I can tell you. Because the Jamaica College management, coaching staff, players, and I suppose it filters it over into the spectators. What drama. Was that an offside call, Wayne, or was that a foul? We need to see it again. It because seems that there was a foul being called. I was focusing more on the celebration from McGee because we thought it was a legitimate goal. Seems like there was a foul and not necessarily any other call because that was a direct free kick. It ended up in the back of the net. But the flag of the first assistant was always up. And again, Leon Brown made I, the call. I'm just a bit surprised that it took the officials such a long time to have security around them because this kind of finish deserves the, the officials to be secured. Now the police officers have come onto the field to meet them. Ian Forbes, the manager for JC, is ballistic. Furious. Look Again, at just look at it. Brian and the crew, could you just bring that back for us? Again, slow motion, Brian. So that was a free kick direct on goal. It went to the back of the net. Players remonstrating. I'm not certain what the call was. Was the call on offside? Was the call a foul? Okay, 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 okay. I'm hearing, I'm hearing from the stadium announcer. He says it was supposed to be an indirect free kick. It should not have been a direct free kick. And that is why he called it back. That's what we are hearing from the stadium announcer. We're not sure. An we're indirect just... free kick. Yeah, what does an indirect free kick mean? A player has to touch the football before it is hit by another player. Right. And, and as I say, let us let us just put this forward. We're hearing this from the stadium announcer. Is that an official word? It uh, seems to be. Yes. And, and that is why I'm, 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 I'm waiting. Because the, apparently the stadium announcer went to the referee and the referee told him apparently because he wouldn't have been saying it in front of so many people. The stadium announcer is just announcing that the referee told him that it was an indirect free kick. And as Owen just explained, that was a direct free kick. And if it is so, then that as it is, it is an illegitimate goal. Was not explained to the players of Jamaica College when the call was made? Again, a lot of questions left to be asked. A difficult way to end a game, but it's always going to be high intensity, high rivalry whenever these two teams play. Jamaica College complaining, remonstrating, asking a lot of questions. Coaches, players, supporters, they're questioning the purple side of the fence. The purples are jubilant. If we could just pick up Tariq McGee. Our camera personnel, that would be nice. He's inconsolable. Darren Virtue, a former Jamaica College player, is trying his best to take the young star away from it all. Is inconsolable. Is incandescent with rage. What a moment. We're still trying to... There he is. He's disappeared under the dugout. The security personnel are still standing close by the officials are still on the field and it's the best thing for them to do just to remain there where the security is as we look at Tyreek McGee that's making his way back onto the field and he falls over 
Look at him. Agonizing. Very painful, I thought. He thought that he gave Jamaica College a lifeline. It was a beautifully struck free kick. However, what we're getting from the stadium announcers is that... Oh, let's, take a, let's take a break from all of that and look back at what transpired and what led up to that very, very crucial moment in the game. Second half highlights. Anthony Mullins, who had a wonderful game, delivered one. And Atkins a while on the park. Just bounced to him. All right, there you go. That is it. The second goal for KC came off wall for the party. And uh, it might go down as an own goal. It will go down as an own goal. But Kingston College will take it anyway. And those in purple and white were just going crazy. Tyree McGee just trying to shimmy his defender. That was his first shot on target. In the end, it was in Rodriguez's hand. Again, Maggie just delivering this one, and this was a difficult call for Rodriguez to make. Had that one, and then Malik Howell just followed up, but Casey kept knocking at the doorsteps. They were defending, they were trying. That one fell to Reed. He wanted that one back, understanding that it was a good opportunity for him, but just wasn't able to deliver. And then McGee, many times over, you would have bet that he would have made that one counted, but just wasn't able to do so. And then GSC had some good looks. Second half, they turned it up. But then this was the goal. Across, Rodriguez didn't handle well, and Captain Malik Howell came in very deliberate and headed that one home. That was 2-1 with about three minutes left. And that's how it ended. KC is still, the fans of Kingston College still not certain how the turnout of the game is going to be. But as we have it unofficially, or, or, or officially rather, uh, Kingston College Goals two, Jamaica College, goal one. Possession bust a little bit by Jamaica College. And as you can see, shots on and off target went in the favor of Kingston College, 20 versus 17. Yellow cards, Kingston College had three, Jamaica College had one, but the statistic at the top is what matters most. At the end of it all, Kingston College, two, Jamaica College won. So I understand that Wayne Walker now has winning coach Lola Bernard. He's on the sidelines. Wayne? All right, so we're here with Ludlow Bernard, the, the coach of the winning team tonight, Kingston College. They beat Jamaica College 2-1. The result, yes. But what happened with the very last kick of the game is what's going to reverberate around the Caribbean, not only here in Jamaica. Because I've never seen anything like that. First of all, Coach, congratulations. Let me get that out of the way. Congratulations on your victory tonight. Yeah, man. Um, well played, Kingston College. Um, brave may fall, but never yield. We live to fight another day. Um, JC gave it all at the end. We expected it. I think we could have been a little bit more better organized defensively in, in really protecting the 2-0 the lead. But we conceded very late in the game and we actually put some pressure on ourselves. But um, I'm, very, I'm very elated for the win. And I feel very fortunate tonight. You got your tactic right, did you not? <laughs> Let's just say I got it right today. Mullins, what a job. And McGee. You know, Wayne, I would want to say more, but I'm not going to say it because there's another possibility. Of you right? playing them again. But um, we, we, just like um, the, the Jamaica College coach, we did our work. It was a good tactical battle out there between us both and um, at the end of the day it's only unfortunate that one of us has to lose no to that moment did you inquire well you were the winners you had no reason prior, to prior to that kick being taken my assistant on the sideline kept saying indirect 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 because he saw the, the hand signal as at the time right so when we saw him kick he was the first one to jump up and said no goal Right? I probably didn't see it at the time and probably would have conceded a goal at the time. But then again, dear Miss Fartin is my luck. 
So you guys on the bench realized the minute it was taken that it was an illegitimate goal? My goalkeeping coach immediately saw it and called it. Because the question now being asked by the fans around us, did the referee put up his hand the to indicate? The referee did put up his hand. My, immediately as he, put up, as he placed his hand in the ear, my, my goalkeeping coach, he recognized it and he shouted to me and he shouted to the boys, indirect, indirect, it has to pass, it has to pass. Ludlow, congrats again. Go celebrate with your boys and get ready for the final on Saturday. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Good. All right, so there you have it from Ludlow Bernard. We're now going to throw it back to the main stage to make sure that we continue the discussion tonight. It's going to go on for weeks, I'm sure, and whoever, who knows, however much longer. Let's go back to the main stage. All righty then, um, what, uh, what an occasion. It almost feels like a final, but there, there's more to come. I, I don't think I've ever quite seen a football game end, ending quite like that. The KFC big deal moment of the game is brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good. All right, this was our KFC big deal moment of the game. This was the Stets game against Calabar. And I think that this was the point when, Ke when uh, the Stets team equalized sending the game into penalties and um, that, was, that was the KFC moment of the game and look at the Stets people in the stand. The KFC big deal moment of the game was brought to you by KFC. It's finger licking good. All right, nice way to segue from the KFC big deal moment of the game because we have Mr. I can we say Mr. KFC himself, Andre Roper, <laughs> the brand manager of KFC in Jamaica. First of all, Andre, what a game, what a finale to a game. Have you ever seen a game ended with a free kick directly in the goal? The referee says indirect, it doesn't count. Unbelievable. Um, boy, the Super Cup so far has been enthralling, invigorating, exciting, all those superlatives, but today was just... This, this was one of the most memorable days um, in the two years we've been on board. I've never quite seen a game end like that. But I've come to expect the a little bit of the unexpected yes, in the last is. couple of years of the Super Cup. Um, as a fan and as a sponsor, can't complain at all. Tell us about KFC's involvement. This I understand is your second year. Yeah, I mean, KFC has long been involved in youth sports, um, helping to uplift youth and provide a platform for youth through sports. Um, track and field, basketball, basketball for decades, and this year and last year, football. So it's been a platform for us through our Big Deal brand. We have a term at KFC, Big Deal Business, and yeah. we use that to really describe anything that brings people together, galvanizes the public, um, creates a lot of excitement, creates a lot of camaraderie, and nothing quite does that like football. And rightly so, the Flow Super Cup has been described as a Champions League of schoolboy football, and for us, it's a true big deal affair. And we use the KFC Big Deal brand to really um, help to elevate this platform, provide a way to elevate the youth and give an even bigger opportunity to showcase their talent. You see the talent this yep. year, um, I tell you, it's been enthralling for us. And it's a way in which we can give back to our fans, our customers, who many of whom are football fans, who support us day in, day out, year in, year out, and who come to the games. They came to Catherine Hall last week. Bumper crowd, especially for the Russians.